YOLO! So since the last video I've become a proud owner of 1987 Audi Quattro, Audi 80 Quattro, that's Audi 4000 in the United States. And today I will talk a bit about the tie rod ends. Basically if you have the same car one option is just to junk it because you cannot find rear tie rod ends on the market for this car. It's filming. <laughs> in reality though, we'll have to deal with the challenges in the order in which they are received. Uh, so if you try searching right now, you will not be able to find rear tie rod ends for this car for sale. You'll find front tie rod ends fairly easily and some websites mislabel their, their tie rod ends. They'll sell front tie rod ends they'll send them to you in the mail if you buy rear tie rod ends from them because they don't have rear tie rod ends. Um, so that's that. So you start by measuring the length of your entire tie rod end assembly. It's a very important step because if you don't have an alignment machine, if you don't you like if you don't do alignment on your car yourself in your shop and you don't measure the length of the tie rod end assembly before you do the job on it, uh, it means that you will have to pay a shop to do alignment on your car all over again after you do your tie rod end job. So you measure exactly from the center of the bolt on the inner side of the tie rod end assembly until the center of the tie rod end. So because you cannot get uh, Audi 4000 rear tie rod ends uh, on the market, I got a BMW E30 rear tie rod ends. Um, you can decide for yourself, I would say that they are about 99% uh, the same and 
that way they are a direct fit with the thread actually. I don't know what it is about these rear tie rod ends. Actually, whatever manufacturer you order them from, uh, they all kind of look like they're made out of kids play-doh a little bit. <laughs> So there is a bit of a discrepancy uh, in how the two tie rod ends will sit and what I will end up doing actually is screwing the BMW tie rod end all the way in. Um, basically the BMW tie rod end has a longer body before the thread and the total length of the tie rod end assembly in the end needs to be the same as the one we have in the beginning. So for, if that makes sense for that reason, basically it's going to end up being screwed in all the way. Yeah, throw yeah. stick. Careful, careful. The, Not the bushing. The bushing rubber. Not the caliper boot. Very important. If you use a blowtorch like ours to heat up your parts, really look around your area that you're going to be heating up because around the tyro dents there are a lot of rubber parts and bushings and things that you can burn through. And if you end up doing that, then you might screw yourself for more parts and more time that you'll need to spend. And you depending on what you burn, you might end up rendering your car undrivable for some time. I actually found it surprisingly useful to use the 88 penetrating oil right onto the heated part, just directly after it's been heated. Uh, it doesn't all evaporate and uh, for some reason it just, it just helps break it if you need to get the thread going and that's how our inner tie rod ends broke. There is some left hand thread involved, so there is also this problem.
more important information. Uh, Notice the direction in which the nuts on the tie rod end assembly uh, get loosened. Because of the left hand thread, you'll see that the inner nut on the tie rod end assembly gets loose in the same direction as the outer one. So in the next shot, see the direction in which I'm turning the, the inner nut and the outer one gets turned the same way. So you remove the retaining nut. And then you pop the tie rod end out. Don't, please don't do it the way it's done in every or every other YouTube video. Don't hammer it out. Just use a proper tool because you're risking deforming the thread on the tie rod end and one thing can happen that can happen it won't fit through the hole on the way up if it's deformed or also if something is up with the part that you're trying to install as a replacement and then for some reason you have to throw the old tie rod end back on for a little bit you might not be able to use it right so don't do that So you unscrew the tie rod ends, you unscrew, take off the entire tie rod end assembly as many pieces as you can so that you can clean them and lubricate them and then you'll never have to waste yourself on that rust again.
Ausgelaufene. Clean all the parts that you took off really well and lubricate them. Like, definitely put anti seize lubricant on there. I used aluminum anti seize lubricant. Um, that way it won't rust again. And I mean, like, be generous. Like, make it greasy like it's a baby who has eczema. What? Like, you know, like when a baby has eczema, you have to use like a lot of oils and well, probably anybody who has eczema. I don't have eczema. the tie rod end in the way it is taken out in every or every other YouTube video don't hammer it because one thing dude I'm gonna buy the water gun this thing dates me it always comes over It's like one of those big ones, you know, like, whatever. 